Uh, yes, today's uh, session is uh, on a very important topic, uh, which is uh, the compromise arrangements and amalgamations. In short, we call it CAA. And this is uh, a very important topic for CA final, uh, not only for exam purpose, but for practical purpose, practicing purpose, and of course consultancy purpose. But you know, the limitation of time, we cannot have a detailed session, but this is a you know overview and detailed study plan of this chapter. Most of the students feel it's very difficult to study uh, due to the reason of lack of the basic concepts. So I'll uh, rush to, through this uh, you know video class. What is the objective of CAA? You know, must understand the meaning of CAA. What is CAA? Compromise, arrangements and amalgamation. The basic concept of this is the company is entering into a compromise or arrangement or amalgamation with its shareholders and creditors. And you know, there are the two people who invest in a company as far as the debt equity or the equity versus debt is concerned. One is the shareholders of the company, we call as members and uh, who you know uh, give loan to the company or supply goods to the company that goes the creditors you know the company when it goes positively or negatively basically enters into a compromise or arrangement with uh, its shareholders and creditors and that is called that is through a mechanism of scheme uh, and scheme is nothing but an agreement format uh, which is the you know the edifice of any scheme you know arrangement in practical life in business life so it's basically a scheme, it's an ag agreement, it's an arrangement. So basically what is CA? CA is the platform or the legal provision which allows you to enter into compromise, arrangement or amalgamation by the company with its own shareholders and creditors and that is done through the vehicle of a scheme. So you will see in the study material there are numerous terms uh, used, especially the most frequently used term is the scheme. So this is a scheme. Scheme is a written document which is entered into by the company and its shareholders and its creditors, the two, two people who basically invest in the company. Right? And this is the concept of CAA. The legal provisions uh, is dealt in section 230 to 240 of the Companies Act 2013 and you have to refer to the rules, the company's car rules 2016 and you have uh, three NCLT forms and of course 12 to 13 you know uh, uh, forms which is stated in the rules, it, rules itself and I'll give you a bird's eye view of this syllabus you know, this chapter of course so the introducing the study plan we have to the main sections we have to study is section 230 which deals with the power to compromise or make arrangement with creditors and members and this is the section which gives the power to the company basically section 231 gives the power to the tribunal to enforce it so, see, the basic thing of this chapter is students fail to understand the concept. So that's why I'm scratchly I'm saying 230. You must know the difference between different sec, you know the various sections. 230 deals with the power which is being given to the company to enter into compromise. 231 gives the power to the honorable tribunal. That's an actual company or tribunal to enter into to enforce the you know compromise arrangement. Section 232 is the very unique section of the company side which speaks about amalgamation or mergers, mergers and amalgamations. 233 speaks about merger or amalgamation in certain classes of companies which we will deal with later. 237 power of central government to amalgamate companies in public interest. And 239 is the ultimate section which speaks about what should be, we will do with the books and papers of the amalgamated company. See students, I don't say that this is the only the six sections you have to study. The chapter is big. But to understand the concept and to take, take the exam and of course for the consultancy purpose the preliminary right, up to the basics this section is the crux of the game. So before I go into you into the section wise details I, I, it is my responsibility to to make you understand the whole concept in one slide and this is the slide is the golden slide which speaks about the various steps involved in car. What are the steps basically you should have a draft a scheme. Point number one, I told you a scheme is a written document or an agreement between the company and its shareholders and creditors. Two, I told you, you know, this company and its members and creditors, that is the second point. The third point is you have to make an application to tribunal for seeking orders for convening meetings. This meeting is a special meeting, it is an extraordinary meeting and it is a special meeting because the resolutions passed is not as that as stated in the other provisions of the Companies Act. And next thing is you have to conduct the meeting. 
at the meeting it is very important that you should conduct the meeting as per the approval or the order received from the tribunal for example the quorum proxies allowed or not the chairman the, the minutes preparing time everything you know everything is not like that as per the other provisions in the company said with respect to the meetings here the meetings we call as a merger meeting right is a special extraordinary general meeting that should be conducted only as per the terms and conditions stipulated in the order which has been approved by or issued by the honorable tribunal and you at the meeting you should pass a resolution this resolution is unique because you should get the approval from the members with a separate meeting from the secret creditors at a separate meeting and secret creditors at a separate meeting so obviously in a typical company you have a three types of meeting and in this meeting the approval system is uh, not an ordinary resolution a not an special resolution it is a unique way of resolution wherein the 75 percentage of value of the shareholders should approve the same but they should represent the majority number i will give a simple example here assume that we have 100 members at the meeting right and out of the 100 members only one say bilu balakrishnan is the only one which holds 87 percentage shares i repeat again 100 shareholders one shareholder is the major shareholder that is his name is bilu and he has 87 percentage of shares now we'll see how this is been passed this resolution should be passed by 51 numbers 51 persons in that 51 person i should be there because why i hold 75% more of the shareholders so again you read uh, the the law 75% of shareholders or creditors in value representing majority number so it should be a combo 51% of members should approve also and 75% of shareholders or creditors who hold 75% more value should also approve so don't forget that this is a unique and toughest way of resolution specified only in the merger provisions nowhere in the company side because other provisions you require only either you require 15% number or you require 75% value here both you require both clubbed at the stretch you require so that is the law then after the meeting is over you should file the report to the honorable you know ncrt the report should be filed by the chairman then once the report has been filed the ncrt you have to file another petition to the ncrt for sanctioning the approved scheme now the scheme has been approved by the shareholders and creditors then you have to take again that to the second petition no one for the meeting that is the application to the tribunal second again you have to go to the tribunal asking seeking praying to sanction this approved scheme which is now been approved by the shareholders and creditors so in merger you have to go to the tribunal two times and after the tribunal fortunately if the tribunal honorable tribunal has ordered the sanctioning of the scheme then you have to file the certified copy of the order with the register of companies in form inc 28 and with that the whole process of amalgamation will be over so this is an overview for study point of view uh, of the whole steps of ca this slide is very important please take a note of that and uh, you know work accordingly completed the overall view of this chapter basically our chapter or the main crux of this law now i am moving to section wise interpretations even though the time within the time limit i will make you sure that you go through the you know you 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 will get mastering to the provisions especially the form numbers which is very well ex expected from a ca final student this concept students this is the first slide section 230 i told you 230 and 231 you must know the difference 230 gives the power to compromise by to the company and 231 231 speaks the power of the honorable tribunal to enforce the compromise so what is the law there is a compromise or arrangement say there is a compromise or arrangement proposed between the company and its members we know that there is a scheme we have make an application to the tribunal along with the scheme in form nclt1 don't forget the form number nclt1 is the first application form you have to along with the nclt1 you have to file a notice of admission form in nclt2 and you have to file a list of documents like latest financial statement valuation report you know the memorandum articles and uh, you know the the shareholding pattern you have to file the you know the exchange ratio computation etc etc you have to look into the study material what are the details you have to file all this discloses has to be filed by way of an affidavit and that should be in form number nclt6 so this slide itself speaks about the gearing up stage of amalgamation and merger so the first thing you have to do is there should be a compromise you have to file a petition the application to the nclt in nclt1 you have to file notice of admission in nclt2 and you have to file the mandatory list of documents by way of an affidavit in nclt6 form nclt6 now what will happen so this uh, the slide is continuing 
at the meeting i told you that you have to you have to pass a resolution here there is a diversion that if this scheme involves a cdr what is a cdr cdr is you know corporate debt restructuring that means you are entering into a separate arrangement with the creditors of the company then that should be specifically made and approved by 75 percentage in value of the creditors and that CDR along with the informations has to be filed in form number CA1 with the NCLT. Now coming back to the shareholders meeting, that CDR point only applies when you have a separate arrangement with the creditors. Corporate debt restructuring, that is only as with respect to the debt, uh, you know, um, the borrowings is concerned, that is a separate thing. Now coming to the normal thing, you have to call the EGM, I told you a special meeting for the amalgamation. In that meeting, I already told you that 75% value representing majority number should pass this scheme you give a public notice uh, calling you know the notice should be the agm notice you always you send to the uh, you know members auditors etc etc but here you have to give a public announcement and that should be in form number car 2 the slide continues the scheme can be objected by 10 percent of shareholders in value or 5 percentage of creditors in value if it is objected the scenario will be different that that is a different procedure Along with the notice to the shareholders convened in the meeting and along giving public notice, you have to give notice to the sectoral regulators. Who are the sector regulators? You have SEBI, if it's a registered company, if it's a bank, you have to RBI, then you have to give notice to the official liquidator, ROC, Competition Commission of India, etc. They are called the sectoral regulators and that notice should be in form CA 3. Then the meeting is concluded positively. The report or the minutes of the uh, you know the meeting should be prepared by the chairman and that should be filed in form number K four. Now coming to I told you the second applic you have to say file a second petition to the NCLT because the first petition you had filed is for convening the meeting right now the meeting is over right now you have to again go to the NCLT and that petition should be in form number K five seeking don't forget seeking sanctioning of the approved scheme. The scheme is now been approved by the shareholders and creditors. Now that scheme should be sanctioned by the NCLT. You can expect the order of the NCLT in form K6. Now coming to section 232. The same procedure is section 232. What is the difference between 230, 231 and 232? 231 it speaks exclusively about amalgamation. So if the scheme of arrangement or compromise or compromise arrangement involves an amalgamation, what is amalgamation? Transferring assets and liabilities of A company, that is transferred company to, the, to B company and A company is been dissolved. If this is the scenario of the, if this is the crux of this arrangement, then that will be called as an amalgamation. If so, section 232 will apply apart from section 230. So what are the 232? If the compromise or arrangement involves amalgamation, then section 232 will apply, then the order of the tribunal will be in form CA 7, not in CA 6. Got it? That's the difference between 230 and 231 and 232 and this is the difference between form CA 6 and CA 7. CA 6 speaks about the order of compromise and arrangement, CA 7 speaks about order of amalgamation. Don't forget that. And you have to study the contents of the order in very detail and once the order of the tribunal is been received, the certified true copy of the same has to be filed with the register of companies in form INC 28 within 30 days. So this is the basics of compromise and arrangement, uh, section 230, section 231 and section 232. 231 I am not referred into detail because that is not that much relevant. So students don't forget to, you know, uh, um, confuse and don't, don't confuse between 231 and 232. 231 speaks about CA that is compromise arrangement and 232 speaks about specific case of amalgamation. So in nutshell, when a compromise or arrangement involves amalgamation, section 232 will apply. The order of the tribunal will be in CA 7, not in CA 6. With this, I will end the first edition of this you know, uh, video class and the second edition will follow the other part. Thank you.